Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today, we're going to be testing out running our Steam games from a micro SD card versus an NVMe drive and an external SSD. Recently, Valve announced the Steam Deck, and what I have in my hand right now is actually the One X Player. This is an awesome little handheld gaming PC. Runs an Intel i7 1165G7. It's got an 8.4 inch screen, and right now you can see I'm running GTA 5 on it. But this is running from a micro SD card, and it's not a super top the line micro SD card either. I completely understand that this isn't the Steam Deck, but it does have a UHS-1 capable micro SD card slot. We can kind of get an idea of what kind of load times we're going to be looking at on the Steam Deck by testing it out on a device like this. Now originally I wanted to use the iNeo, but unfortunately it doesn't have a built-in micro SD card slot. I could have used a USB 3.0 one, but the One X player does have that UHS-1 capable micro SD card slot. And for this test, I'm going to be using a relatively cheap SanDisk 256GB micro SD card. Nothing special here. You can pick these cards up for around $31. Sometimes they go on sale for around $25. But it's relatively cheap and it's not a super top of the line card. But it does work for storing, loading, and running our games on a device like this. When it comes to the Steam Deck, if you're watching this video, you probably already know the versions. There's a 64GB version running eMMC storage. There's a 256 and a 512, and both of those are using a faster NVMe drive. But there were a lot of people that opted for the 64 gigabyte model, and the Steam Deck does have a micro SD card slot that's UHS-1 supported. So you can use a micro SD card to store your games, but the big question is, how fast will it load our games? Is it going to play the games fine? And in my experience, while playing games from a micro SD card on a device like this, I've run into no issues whatsoever, except for longer loading times. The game doesn't run at a lower FPS, it doesn't run any slower, it's just really about those loading times. Just even getting to the title screen can take a bit of time when you're running from an SD card. Now another option you have is an external drive. This is an external USB-C M.2 drive. It's pretty quick and this is actually what I've been using on all of my PCs for my Steam library for about the past year. Now what I want to do is just show you how to set up a micro SD card with Steam. This will also work with a different hard drive or an external hard drive. It really doesn't matter. It's actually pretty easy to do that. And then we're going to get right into some testing. All right, so it's super easy to set up a different drive for Steam, and I'm just going to walk you through it real quick. As you can see, we have that SD card. My drive is E. It's already been set up with Steam, but uh, if I go in here to my library, you can see I don't have any games installed, and that's because I don't have a drive set up yet. Up in the top left-hand corner, go to Steam, Settings, Downloads, Steam Library Folders, and from here, we can add a new library. Add a library. I'm going to find drive E. As we saw, my SD card is drive E. Steam. Give it a second. You can see we have three games. Now we can also set this as our default folder. And by setting it as default, when you go to install a new game, it'll automatically go to that drive. You can switch that drive before you start the install, but I always use uh, just set as default. Close. Close it up. Now I have my games ready to go. These are going to be running from the SD card. And like you saw at the beginning, I was playing Grand Theft Auto 5 from that SD. So Steam has made it really easy to swap your drives over. And I've been using this feature for a very long time with external uh, SSDs, be it an M.2 SSD or just a regular old 2.5 inch SSD. Before we move over to the real world testing, I just wanted to show you a couple benchmarks I ran on the internal NVMe SSD, that 256 gigabyte micro SD card, and my external M.2 SSD. When it comes to the NVMe, it trumps everything else, as you can see here. Read speeds are around 2,517, write 1,958. Moving over to that SD card, we're looking at 87 read, 67 write. So it's way off from that NVMe drive, and the external drive is much slower, but it's going to be a lot faster than that SD card. There are faster SD cards out there. This is just one that I had on hand. I use these for my Raspberry Pis, my cameras, basically anything that I need to put an SD card in. I use these SanDisk cards because they're readily available on Amazon and they're pretty cheap for higher capacity. Before we get into some real world testing, I just want to let you know that your speeds are going to vary. It really depends on what SD card you get. We don't know exactly what drive they're using in the Steam Decks yet. This is just my experience of running Steam games from a micro SD card on an x86-based gaming handheld. Alright, so first up we have CSGO running from the internal SSD. Right here in the middle, this is 4 times speed just to get through it. 
but this loads up in 26 seconds from the internal SSD. I'm going to run that same test on the micro SD card. Again, we've sped it up right in the middle here. And loading this game up from an SD card, we get a time of around 41 seconds. So there's a 15 second difference there. And of course, that SSD is going to be much faster, but it is doable. Let's go ahead and check out Grand Theft Auto 5 running from the internal SSD. And from the SSD to the main menu of Grand Theft Auto 5, 46 seconds. Let's move over to that SD card and see what happens. Like I mentioned at the beginning, this is really just one side of the story. We're just trying to reach the main menu of the game, and from the SD card, we can reach the main menu in 53 seconds, which gives us a difference of 7 seconds. Moving over to The Witcher 3, here we are with the SSD. And we can get to the main menu in 11 seconds, but running the same test on that micro SD card, it is significantly longer. From the SD card, it actually takes 31 seconds to get to the main menu of The Witcher 3, which is a 20 second difference. So far, we've only really taken a look at title screen loading times, but when it comes to getting into gameplay, this is where that SD card will really struggle. With GTA 5, it's 39 seconds from the main menu to get into gameplay from the SSD. Now when we move over to that micro SD card, so on the internal SSD, we had a time of 39 seconds from the title to get into gameplay. From that micro SD card, it takes 1 minute and 10 seconds to get into gameplay. And like I said, this is really going to vary depending on the speed of the SSD they're using in the Steam Deck, what kind of micro SD card you have, but it is doable. It will take longer to load from an SD card, but once you get into gameplay, you saw at the beginning, this was running from an SD card. Now this isn't a fancy SD card or anything like that, it's a simple SanDisk 256GB card that you can pick up on Amazon every day of the week. The final test I wanted to run here was that external M.2 SSD, it's a 1TB drive, this is the one I've been using for a while, and with this we can get to the title screen of GTA 5 in 48 seconds. Not far off at all from the internal NVMe SSD, and uh, it's definitely faster than the SD card, but this is really something you want to do in dock mode. I guess since the Steam Deck does have that USB Type-C port on it, I mean, you could walk around like this, but really this is meant for docked mode. And finally, on that external SSD, getting into some gameplay, only took 43 seconds over the micro SD card's 71 seconds. So it's definitely not bad at all using a drive like this. So overall, I mean, yeah, you're going to be able to run your games from a micro SD card if you opted for the 64 gigabyte version of the Steam Deck. Even the 256 gigabyte version isn't going to hold many games at all. And when you move up to the 512, you're still only kind of looking at four to six larger games on that internal NVMe SSD. An easy solution when the unit's docked is to use an external hard drive. You can go with a mechanical drive. You can pick up a Western Digital 1, 2, or even an 8 terabyte drive for pretty cheap nowadays. But what I've been using is that external M.2 SSD, and it's worked out really well. All the computers that I test uh, on my channel, all of my Steam library is ready to go on that. All I need to do is plug it into the new PC, set that directory up in Steam, and that's what I run my games from. And really, when it comes down to it, they load up just as fast as they do on the internal storage of whatever PC I'm using. Now, Valve has come out and said that this is a slotted drive in the Steam Deck, so uh, I will be doing a tutorial on upgrading as long as I can find a larger drive once the Steam Decks are released. But, uh... If you're not into taking your unit apart and uh, replacing that drive or just adding a drive in the 64 gigabyte version, you can store, load, and run your games from an SD card. Load times will be longer than that NVMe SSD, but it will get you by. So that's going to wrap it up for this video. Really appreciate you watching. I had a lot of people asking about this, so I figured I'd go ahead and make a quick video. This is not an exact science, and when the Steam Deck is released, I will do another video on loading games up from the SD card because, uh, I mean, it could be faster, it could be slower. We won't really know until the Steam Deck is released, but this was as close as I could get it uh, using this 1X player, which is another x86 handheld gaming PC. But that's it for this one. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And like always... Thanks for watching.